Today's four-wheel drive vehicles have become remarkable combinations of what's practical and what's comfortable. They're rugged, they're tough, and they're built for the land. But today's driver doesn't necessarily have to own broad acres. He may just as easily live in suburbia and live just a few hundred yards from the shops. In other words, vehicles like this are just as appropriate if you are driving in the country or the town, or if the journey is to the cattle market or the supermarket. In the meantime, today's modern tractor is thought by many to be just about as sophisticated as it can be, the world standard for motive power on the land. But it does not, and surely no one can disagree with this, come even close to being ideal for work on today's roads. Neither is it much good when it comes to really rough terrain off the road. Fair enough, it wasn't designed for that. It was designed as a draft vehicle to replace the horse, and as such, it does a very good job. But what if the best of both types of work could be combined into one machine? A machine that was not only good for ploughing, drilling, spraying, row crop work and so on, but also, when necessary, was good on the road and on rough terrain. Well, this is that machine. And the people who come up with it are JCB. It's their high mobility vehicle, the JCB Fast Track. Quite simply, it combines the best of both worlds. So let us see why this is such an exciting new development. How indeed it brings a whole new dimension to both working on the land and driving on the road. And indeed in its own way, how it's just as important to change as the introduction of four-wheel drive. Tractor design has seldom strayed very far from the conventional wisdom of land first and roads second. But now, new research has shown that a considerable proportion of a tractor's working life is spent not on the land, but on the road, and driving from field to field. That being the case, JCB reasoned, why wasn't the tractor better designed for the jobs it did most? It was this fact more than any other which convinced JCB that they should offer farmers something totally new. And this then is the end result. And the key that's opened the door to this greater mobility is the suspension. Now the whole subject of the suspension on this vehicle is a fascinating one because it's not high tech. All the elements within it are tried and tested over many years. It's just the way they've been put together that's unique. As a heavy draft vehicle it can do all that a conventional tractor can do. In a moment we'll see for ourselves with the fast track in action on the farm. We'll see it ploughing equally as well as a conventional tractor and handling other jobs, such as spraying, much better. But as a high comfort on-road 4x4, it'll do what most tractors can't do. It'll tow 14 tonnes legally at 40 miles an hour. Why? Because a user panel of farmers told JCB that it ought to be able to do that. How? because of the design of the suspension. The first thing that strikes me about the JCB Fast Track is that it's built for strength. It's got four equal sized wheels, which we'll come to later, and a cab, which is as good as anything you'll find on a top quality heavy truck. This really is comfortable for the driver and for his mate because this cab has two real seats. The floor is completely flat, very convenient indeed, nothing to trip over. The heat comes in at floor level to keep your body warm and there's fresh air at eye level to keep you alert while you're driving. In the middle here is the steering wheel which is adjustable. The windows operate electrically, real luxury that. There's a radio of course, a standard fitting and there here is air conditioning fitted as standard and there's even somewhere to put your sandwiches and all-round visibility is really excellent 
And now those four equal sized wheels. Quite apart from the good ground clearance they provide, they're also a fundamental design feature, which allows variations in size of tyre and type of tyre without affecting the front to rear axle drive ratios. It's possible, of course, to choose whatever tyre is appropriate to the job in hand. This particular tyre is a fast road tyre, but it's just as good on surface cultivations. The other basic choices are high traction type fitted to wheel rims suitable for really heavy going, ploughing or subsoiling, narrow tread row crop type for spraying or other working fields with standing crops, and finally dual wheels on the rear lowering the ground bearing pressure and therefore giving less soil compaction and also providing increased traction for working on top. Look underneath and there's plenty of strength in evidence. Feel the chassis and it's just like a very strong, tough truck. And there are two other direct comparisons too. The steering, which is direct with just enough power assist to give the driver the feel of ground conditions. And the braking system. This is air over hydraulic to EEC truck specification with massive single discs on all wheels. And before we leave brakes, a very important point, there are auxiliary connections for trailers, both air and hydraulic. Power comes from the six-cylinder Perkins 1000 series, either 120 horsepower naturally aspirated or 145 horsepower turbo. There's a single disc clutch about as easy to operate as the one in the average family saloon, and then there's a fully synchromesh gear select. There are two gearboxes driving in series, a six-speed box and a range box, which together give 18 forward gears, high, medium or low, and six reverse. The fact that it takes existing implements means no specials, no changes to what's already around on the farm. This is a vehicle which will host implements at three positions, on the platform, on the front and on the rear. And if you think PTO design can't be improved after all these years, well, you're wrong. Here at the front, the optional PTO is bi-directional. And what's more, the stub shafts are interchangeable. Meanwhile, at the rear, the PTO shaft is a six spliner with a 20 or 21 spline converter. In other words, whether you're at the front or the back, any attachment will fit. PTO speeds, 1,000 revs per minute or 540, of course, are selectable from the cab, front and rear. The thought that's gone into details like that to cut driver frustration and indeed to make his life that much easier is very reassuring. But let's now examine this great leap forward. High mobility. It's due to a number of factors. For a start, there's weight distribution. On a conventional two-wheel drive tractor, most of the weight is taken by the rear axle. It can be as much as 80%. But when the fast track is under load, the weight becomes evenly distributed to take advantage of the four equal-sized driving wheels. But the most important high mobility factor about this vehicle stems entirely from, you've guessed it, the suspension. Speed on the road, speed on the land, increased productivity and driver comfort all derive from the fast track suspension system. When you look at what JCB have done here, it makes you wonder why tractors have never been fitted with suspensions before. After all, nobody would ever dream of building a car or a motorbike without one. Indeed, there is medical evidence to show that in certain cases, under very rough conditions, some organs in the body can actually become detached, things like the liver and the kidneys. Don't mind the problems with a bad back. I've uh, got one myself, and I can speak from personal experience of driving tractors without suspension. That's what caused mine. Of course, if we were more sensible, we would drive slower. But with the fast track, we can work faster and to a higher standard, too. And the reason is due almost entirely to that suspension, the very ingredient that's been largely denied to farmers in the past. But is a suspension set for rough ground also suitable for the open road? The answer is that on the fast track, various characteristics are combined. 
what we've got is a suspension system able to push the wheels down with as little change in load as possible at the point of contact with the ground. In other words, a way to achieve maximum ground contact and minimum load variation at ground level. JCB wanted to make good handling a high priority, the reason therefore for an understeer design. And the roll characteristic? Well, that's minimal, controlled with the help of a torsion type stabiliser bar. Put all that lot together and you have quite a combination. Enough, I should think, to please people like me who've either had to suffer a poor suspension or perhaps none at all. The front implement linkage is an option and it's very robust, able to take up to three tonnes at the ball end. The three-point linkage is connected directly to the axle casing. It's not connected in any way whatsoever to the chassis. That means that this three-point linkage is entirely independent of the suspension. So on jobs such as ploughing, when implement position is critical, the position is correctly set both by the axle height and the electronic draft control. Now for the rear suspension. It contributes greatly to that safe, high-speed road travel that we've seen. This rear primary suspension comes from nitrogen-charged gas springs. They work in conjunction with these hydraulic cylinders. So on the back end, JCB have come up with a hydro-pneumatic system. And the whole two-axle suspension ensures driver comfort as well as driver control at high speeds. So what else is special about this very remarkable vehicle? Well, it's this. It's the distance between the chassis and the axle, because the ride height remains constant. Look at this example. There is a short time delay built into the system so that the axle can ride over bumps. But after a matter of a few seconds, the ride height control takes over. On this vehicle, as you'd expect, putting a weight on the back pulls the chassis down under the loading. But if we do a similar test on the rear deck of the fast track, the ride height control maintains the distance coming into effect after the delay. There's the option of a platform behind the cab, which like those on utility vehicles can be put to many uses. The difference here is that this one will carry two and a half tons. It's obvious, therefore, that some jobs, and spraying comes immediately to mind, can be done with much greater efficiency. But another important thing which must be borne in mind is that the essence of the engineering on the fast track is simplicity and reliability. Because all of this has been achieved with standard off-the-shelf components. So JCB's design expertise, which has after all been well proven on other specialist vehicles, will now enable farmers to apply new ideas on the land. Because JCB don't claim to be experts in farming, what they do claim to be are engineers who listen to what farmers said they wanted. And here's the end result. A lot of innovative thinking which certainly appears to combine the best of both worlds. So, have JCB achieved what some thought was the impossible and outperformed the old faithful tractor? Well, the only way to assess that is to watch it working at a variety of jobs.
Well, we've seen the work it can do, and we've seen the faster times it can achieve on some jobs. But now, if I can get there, that is, I want to find out what the fast track can achieve under conditions like this. So here we go, the uh, opportunity I've been waiting for to really give the fast track some stick. 